Adobe Firefly video is finally available. I've been waiting for it for a long time. I immediately did a few tests with the help of ChatGPT and Midjourney. Without further ado, let's dive right in. There are a few essential functions on the Firefly homepage. In the center, you can choose between image and video. Here you enter the prompt, and with the generate button, you can get started. Below this, you can choose between featured, image, video, audio, and vector. If you click on this, you can filter the individual boxes that are displayed below. For example, if you want to know everything about the topic image, you will now see the selectable options. The same applies to the video section. Let's take a quick look at the user interface. How does it work in Adobe Firefly? Let's go to the text to image section. You will notice a context menu on the left. All functions are expanded there by default. I close these menus for the moment, as this allows me to consciously adjust settings, for example, on the model. For content type, I can choose between art and photo. Below this, there is the option to change the composition. And finally, the style. If you look down, you will notice that my previous selection has been highlighted below the prompt bar. To remove this pre-selection, simply click on the X with the left mouse button. There is a similar selection option in the text to video area. Remember, first collapse the menus to consciously define the output. In addition to the model, currently in beta, there is also the aspect ratio, widescreen or portrait. The setting for frame per second is currently set to 24 by default. To see what makes up the individual camera movements, hover your mouse over these small images. You will then see a small animation. If I click on zoom in, for example, this is outlined in white and also included in the video creation. At least that's the theory. More on this in my examples. You can also adjust the camera angle and the shot size. Then of course, there is the main prompt panel. You can find it at the bottom. Simply enter the prompt there or copy the text into it. Click the generate button on the far right to start the process. Well, that's it in a nutshell. In the context of this tutorial, the decisive factor for me was, how does this work with text to image and image to video? You probably know that every AI platform has its own prompt rules. What are the Adobe Firefly guidelines? Adobe offers a very comprehensive help desk. It describes in detail how each prompt should be structured. With many submenus, reading through all this and understanding it correctly is, of course, a very time consuming process. That's why I copied the entire text of this website and asked ChatGPT to analyze the Adobe Firefly specifications. My request How should a prompt be written so that it fulfills the requirements of Firefly? I use the O3 mini version of ChatGPT for this purpose. After a short analysis, it was clear which parameters were important and in which order. This meant that nothing stood in the way of an initial test. My prompt request to ChatGPT, two orcs in battle formation, but written exactly as Adobe Firefly expects this for its AI platform. The text I have highlighted here is the final result of this prompt definition. As you may already know, I am an enthusiastic mid-journey user. That's why my first attempt involved this platform. So let's take a look at what a prompt, derived from the Adobe Firefly specifications, generated in mid-journey. I then used exactly this prompt suggestion to obtain these images. As you can see, the results are really great pictures. I then used this image of two fearless orc commanders as the basis for the rest of the tutorial. Now a first benchmark was set. Next, Adobe Firefly could enter the race. I'll briefly show you which settings I selected in the context menu on the left. Model. Content type. In the style section, I added this desert planet because it was part of the prompt. You can also see the selection below the prompt. There is the original prompt that ChatGPT wrote. If we now evaluate the result in Adobe Firefly, there is still plenty of room for improvement. I'll quickly close the screen again. If we compare it again with the image of Midjourney, then this one is actually a bit awkward. Okay, the desert is there, and two orcish figures. My first impulse was that I might have made the wrong settings. For example, via the style references or the specification that it must be a photo. The next attempt was exactly the same as with Midjourney. 
This is the only way to make a direct comparison. As with mid-journey, I didn't use anything other than the 16 to 9 aspect ratio. Back in Adobe Firefly, one input was, please use the original prompt. As you can see here, I only set widescreen in the settings options on the left in the context menu. Adobe Firefly then generates these results. If we then compare them directly with each other, we can see a slight improvement. However, if we evaluate the images more closely, we can see that the figures in the background look like copy-paste. The depiction of the two main characters is not really a burner either. In this image, the warriors on the left look like a pile of insects crawling along. The whole thing hasn't really turned out well. A comparison with Midjourney's picture shows a clear winner. The next focus was on the text to video area. I did not make any adjustments in the settings, but simply used the original chat GPT prompt. According to ChatGPT, this prompt follows the specifications of Adobe Firefly itself exactly. I then used it to create this video. To be honest, I am very surprised by it. Especially the guy on the right, with his kind of oversized toilet brush, is a great source of amusement. The green man on the left isn't really an orc either. Okay, he has painted his face green, but it all looks very strange. To put it positively, I had to laugh heartily. Let me try again, but this time I'm using the image to video function. So I used the cool image of the two orcs from Midjourney in Adobe Firefly as the initial frame and inserted the unaltered original prompt as the default. This is how this video was created. From a distance, you could say, well, it looks okay. But if you take a closer look, there are a number of unsightly details that actually make the result unusable. There is flickering everywhere. In the background, the figures appear to stumble around. And I'd actually chosen zoom out in the settings. Weird indeed. If we now compare the entire setup with one of the best AI platforms, the results are surprising. So let's move on to Kling AI. Here too, I tried the text to video function in order to have a real comparison as with Adobe Firefly. You can see the original prompt on the left. I left the other settings at default and also activated a few negative prompts. This is the result. Okay, you might say, it doesn't really look breathtaking, but if you compare it directly with Adobe Firefly, then Kling's result is significantly better than these two guys with this brush-like weapon. In the last comparison, I used the same image to video function in Kling. A quick reminder, this was the result in Adobe Firefly. I also used the amazing mid-journey image as the initial frame in Kling. The result with Kling is just great. Kudos is all I can say. If we compare this again with the Adobe Firefly experiments, then Adobe could be motivated to expand the model again. One key question remains. Adobe actually has a huge database at its disposal with Adobe stock. So why are these results possible? Anyone who knows the competitors, their prices and the results can ask themselves the question about Adobe's pricing model. My conclusion as creative director is therefore, Adobe Firefly is not really usable in its current version. My favourite, despite all the hype about VO2, Luma, Pika, Minimax or similar, is still Kling. That's it for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. Please leave a like, subscribe to the channel and recommend it to others. Thank you very much for listening. See you soon. Your channel, AI, now you know.